کوتاه بود سینیه Welcome to Talk with Sunia, real topics where we get into it. We talk about the stuff that people often think about but really don't discuss. First up, we have our guest, Chanel Williams, a.k.a. CEO, a.k.a. author, a.k.a. speaker. First, I just want to say I want to introduce you like this because we met at the County of San Bernardino. We were working together. One of the things for me with other women that stand out to me is people that have commonalities. Like you stay to yourself. Like we were in a building of 90, 97% women that was really, really catty. Um, and I knew like you stayed in your cubicle, you mind your own business. She was quiet, always fly. And for me, I gravitate towards women that I could connect with. Sometimes people run from people that are like them, but I gravitate to people that I see myself in. So with that being said, tell us a little bit because you just started your company. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so I started, actually, I started in, right at the height of the pandemic. So what was that, April 2020? Uh-huh. So, yeah, and it was crazy because we had just shut down. You know, we went on quarantine. Um, I just signed my lease. My landlord was like, you sure you want to sign this lease? You can back out now. And I'm like, yeah, no, we going, we going forth, you know. And, um, yeah, business has been booming ever since, like nonstop. I have actually a wait list, and every day I'm getting hit up emails or what have you, the phone calls, um, just people out there looking for therapy. And so I'm so glad I followed my instinct and not let the fear of other people, because there were right. people that was afraid, you know, like, what am I going to do? And I was just like, you know, God put it on my heart to do it, and I'm just going to do it. And so, yeah, so two years, two and a half years. Mental health has, you know, we came out of school. Um, I was mad because <laughs> Wasn't getting paid. Nowhere where we should have been getting paid. For sure. Um, and I'm not at the county. No mental health, just in the oh. field. Period. Okay. Yeah. Um, and that's what made me go to the county because I'm like, I can't live off this. And it wasn't really taken as serious as it is now. So, what do you think the jump start was prior to when we graduated and went to school up until now to where mental health, the face of mental health, has changed? Yeah, I think, I really think COVID kind of kicked it off. I think that um, COVID was like, when we, when COVID came upon us, it just really put people like in a frenzy, like anxiety went through the roof for people, you know, it was a new way of living, you know what I'm saying, for people and the natural or normal ways that people cope, that was shut down, you know, you couldn't go to uh, the games, you know, all of the entertainment stuff that people maybe would do to kind of cope with life circumstances and stuff like that, that stuff was shut down. They had to kind of like stay in the house, be with themselves, be with family. Sometimes think about they self and self reflect. Exactly. Exactly. So I just think that, I think that that was, that kicked off mental health in a way that, you know, and even to this day, you know, with everything still going on, we still got COVID. We got the monkey pox, you know, um, crazy. right. Um, uh, we got the economy, right. We got the inflation. It's so much that we haven't experienced. At least I know I haven't in my lifetime. I don't know about you. A lot of this stuff is new, like gas prices. Right. I ain't never paid five, six dollars for gas. I remember when gas was 99 cents a gallon. 98 cents. What? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm glad you said that because you said a lot of things are happening now that we ain't never experienced, which is true. But I want to go back to mental health, like just in general, because we've always dealt with stuff. You know, I'm going to take it a little bit back to slavery. Why are you going going there? Because even in that point, you know, if you didn't think that it would be generational cycles that would affect these people, just like in the urban communities. And that was often overlooked. Like, oh, they're thugs, they're criminals. Mm -hmm. You know, um, this is just in their nature. But no one was looking at the other side of what is the mental state like, yeah. you know, from generations and people think, oh, slavery, but that wasn't that long ago. Right. And so it goes from one generation to the next generation to the next generation while I'm big on breaking cycles, because if you don't break the cycle and you don't know what to compare to, how do you know that something's even wrong? Exactly. Yeah. You know, what's interesting is a lot of my clients, I consider myself a you know, blazers. Yeah, you're the first to do a thing, right? 
like we know our backgrounds, we know where we came from, you know, and that hasn't really dictated our present and our future, right? Right. right. So I'm finding though, and it, it excites me because a lot of my clients I consider to be trailblazers. They're the first to ever pursue therapy. A lot of, you know, African American, black, whatever you want to call them, Hispanics, Latinos, right. Latinos, they're they're the first in their families to even seek out therapy. And it's crazy. And I'll be like, yeah, I, I love working with those kind of people. It's more and more with minorities. Yeah. And the first thing they ask is, do you have a black therapist? Mm -hmm. Do you have a Hispanic therapist? Because, you know, in our community, that wasn't something that was sought after. But I want to go into this because I don't want to forget. <laughs> because you said trailblazers and being the first, yeah. which is true. Mm -hmm. I find it. So I read this article, which really resonated with me because it was talking about an African-American family mm -hmm. that the first one to make it out they're viewed as the successor. Yeah. And as the successor, there's like a false expectation on the successor that they're supposed to help everyone. Yeah. And many times they go, they're trying to help, but they haven't fully made it. And by them being pulled back, trying to help, then they don't make it. They become in debt, like get in debt. And then they lose everything trying to help their family mm -hmm. when they haven't even made it yet. Have you experienced that where you had those family members? Because I have, and I'm going to touch on it, to where people just assume they pocket watching mm -hmm. and they think, they see you taking trips, they see the way you move, and they see the different things, even though we was doing this before we had company. Mm -hmm. And then they assume that they're entitled to what you have or you're wrong because you're not helping nobody or because now you think you're better. Mm -hmm. Entitled. I mean, you know, they feel like they're entitled. I ask, it's funny that you bring that up because, as you know, I just celebrated my 50th birthday. Don't she look amazing? <laughs> amazing. 50th and favored. And so um, I kind of wrote a letter to myself and I presented it at, the, at, my, at my event. And it was talking to my past, my present, and my future. And one of the things I had mentioned in that letter was like, you know, I basically had to isolate myself in a sense as I was trying to find myself, trying to figure out what my purpose was. Like and and when you are doing that, not everybody understands, right? Like you'll do some things that people just think are totally crazy. But then you gotta just know that this is what it's it, this is what you're supposed to do. Right, right. Right. So there was a period of time where I had to kind of like separate myself even from my family. You know, because not everybody understood. And that was hard. You know what I'm saying? But now here we are here. You know, it's like people don't understand that they're, you, you get here, but they don't understand the path that you, that it takes to get there. All they see is like, wow, like you do, like you said, taking trips and doing all these things. And but they don't understand what it took to get there. There was some lonely, painful tears. Girl, no, you know we 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 used to <laughs> what we used to have those conversations praying. You know what I mean? Like it was crazy to experience that, and that's why I say even to this day. And I'm not even we not even where we want to be. Want to be not yet, not yet. But I'm just when I look back, and I'm just like, wow, 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 wow. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's it's crazy. I'm I'm glad you touched on that because I really think entrepreneurs, especially our culture needs to hear that like you can't pull someone up until you're up yet because all you're going to be doing is being pulled back and this is my philosophy in life i'm sorry my kids will tell you this i teach people how to fish i do not fish yes. for anyone yes. no one fish for me yeah. right and so when i see that mentality like oh they won't help nobody i will show you you want me to do it for you yes. i am not yes. and so we got to get away from that entitlement mentality because they'll say, give me a job. Yeah. Give me, the, what do you, what you should be asking when you see a family member on their way up, how, how can I help you? Yeah. Oh, I got this talent. Mm -hmm. How can I use my talent to help boost your business? Mm -hmm. How can I use my talent to basically bring this piece to this piece? You want me to help you not realizing I'm the one that needs the help right now. Right. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. So I'm running a business. I have an employees. And the biggest thing that I said in my last video was that, I didn't want to start my company because I was scared of basically being responsible for somebody else's paycheck. Mm -hmm. If I don't make it, hey, mm -hmm. I got a husband. There's different avenues I could take mm -hmm. legally mm -hmm. that basically will generate income. Right. But if I'm responsible for someone else's 
income and how they provide for their family. I take that seriously. Yeah. And so I think that needs to be a conversation had in families like, hey, you see your family trying to build, pick up a shovel and help dig. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's crazy that you mentioned that because I think, I don't know about you, but for me, I know I had a mentality at one point where I expected my family to be there. You know, there was an I guess the, the, the sense of disappointment I've, I've never had. <laughs> I never thought that they was no. Yeah, I expected them to be like my number one fan, my number oh, one yes. supporter. You know yes. what I'm saying? That, like, in that sense, yes. Yeah, but um, and so turns out that you know they're really not, and no shade to anybody. You know what I'm saying? But I had to, <laughs> I had to shift my mindset to understand that I'm called to a people, and that's those are that's my family. That's may they may not be the people that I'm called to, and the people that I'm called to, they got to be in a position to receive. Right, right. Maybe your family's not, always and maybe there. they're not in a position to receive. Maybe I am called to them, but how they're positioned, they're not. They're, they can't receive from me, and so I can't get stuck there. I gotta move on. I'm glad you said that. I see my eyes. I'm <laughs> glad you said that because sometimes your family, what you think or expect. Because your family will be your greatest supporters, become your greatest haters. Yeah. In public, in in private, and so that's another thing that kind of frustrates me is that I'm okay. For example, when I met you at the, I don't even know you. Right. We never had even even we never had a conversation. I will watch you first. Mm -hmm. Like okay, you know she might <laughs> she mind her own business. These women over here twice. You know what I'm saying? 60s up, been at the county 20, 30 years, mm -hmm. doing the same stuff. And I'm like, okay, there's something different about this person, right? And so for me, instead of watching people be like, I wonder, you know, what this person is about. They seem to be a decent person. Because our family knows this. You know, I see what Samia and Chanel are doing. Like, I'm inspired by that. And I ain't support them. Yeah. Now, they think they better. They taking trips. They don't want to help nobody. And that's the part I don't understand. Because I like, I love to hear about people's life. Like I like to watch uh, documentaries or movies. I would watch a movie about somebody's life. Mm -hmm. Like Ray, they like, oh, but he was on drugs. He was so nah, you didn't. So this was a disabled man that couldn't see. Yeah, he uh, succumbed to drugs, but at the same time, he accomplished so much. So my thing is, I watch people, and that's inspiration for me. So when someone is watching, especially a family member. And you mad at that. I can't relate to that. Yeah. I can't relate. Yeah. It it reminds me of um it's like I'm glad you brought that up because it just reminds it, I always try to keep my mindset to a place where I'm not irritated by the things around me, especially things that I can't control. And it's like with those people, I don't know. My I guess my expectation kind of just I, I don't really have the expectation of certain things from people, I guess, if you will. And I just lost my train of thought. That's okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, I, it was something you said. It was really good, though. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know. I just will come back to this. So I want to touch on value and time, right? Mm -hmm. um, and access. So, you know, when you get to a level, not even a level. I've just always been picky and choosy of who I let around me. My thing is my safe haven is my house. Mm -hmm. From the time I had my first place at 16, I've never brought everybody to my house. I believe your house is your safe haven. Yeah. When I walk out the doors of my house, I'm open for hurt, pain, disaster, crime, because I'm out in the world. But my house mm -hmm. is my safe haven. And so even access to me is my safe haven. Like, what do you feel about, you know, people wanting access or just giving people access to you? Yeah. I, you know, we, I, have, I have the same belief. My house is my haven. That's, that's where I reside. That's where my peace comes from. That's where my serenity comes from. So, and I don't invite everybody over to me. Right. You know, I, right. even my family members, it's like, you need to have an invitation. You know, my kids, like some people think that that's crazy, but even my kids, you know, I tell them. If you're going to come over, hey, let me know. You know what I mean? Um, and I believe that. I believe it's boundaries. I, I believe that we all should have those kind of boundaries because you people will drain you. You know, and us being in the field that we're in and 
us having the personality. We're people helpers. We like to help people. And so because of that, we have to be mindful of a lot having people having access because the wrong people that may get access to us may try to suck us dry. Right. So I don't I don't I, I'm big on that. I'm big on who gets access to me. And it's not coming from a puffed up place. I don't it's not that I think I'm better than or anything. I'm protecting me, my peace. And a lot of people don't understand that. They think, oh, she's being bougie. She's being, you know, she thinks she all that. Who is she to think that, you know, it's something special about her to have access? It's not even on that level. But it is something special about her. True. Yes. True. And, and okay, so I'm glad you said that. No arrogance, but there right. is something special about me. So going back to my thought, where I lost my thought before, what I realized in my family was they took me, for, they take me for trauma, right? They I like that. Yes. I like that. Yes. They know me outside of my gifts and what I do and things like that. And outside of that, they don't really know who I am. So they can't really see the gift in me. They can't see that there is something special on me. All they know is I'm Shamel and probably is looking at my past and all the things that I as not really seeing my future, where I got a glimpse into my future. You know what I mean? I know what my future looks like. And so um, I think that that's where the problem comes with, with the family is they kind of, I had a family member, we're therapists, right? We know the DSM, we know the, the mental health Bible, right? We know what to look for. And I had, I remember um, sharing with a family member that a certain person had a disorder. They kind of just took it for like they like she don't know what she's talking about because I'm sure male. I'm not the, the LMFT. I'm not that one. I'm not the professional, right? And I was just like, okay, ain't that crazy? Yeah, it's. I'm glad you said that. It's funny to me because respect to Michael Todd, amazing man, right? He came out with relationship goals. Do you know how long I have been talking about family members about relationships? And they, oh, did you watch the video? I'm like, this dude is telling y'all the same stuff I've been telling y'all for years. What other family member told me? We had a whole conversation, broke it down, breaking cycles, cycles, spiritual. I read a book. It's the same okay, stuff I just stuff. told you. And honestly, that was when the light bulb went off for me. Yeah. And I said, you know what? Stop pouring into people that don't want it from you. Yes. And my prayer was, God, send those around me. Because you, and this is not even from an arrogant place. I know my gift. Is, yeah. Everybody has a gift. Yeah. You might have a friend that's going to make you laugh because she has a joyful spirit. Mm -hmm. You might have the friend that gives great advice. You may have the sister that you know when you're down, she's going to take you somewhere where you need to be. You have the gift giver. Everybody has a gift. And so for me, when I see my gifts are not respected or valued, I don't want to be around anybody that doesn't value me. So you no longer get access. So now when people come, and, you know, they want to talk about their problems because they want you to say, I'm silent. Yeah. I'm not your therapist. Yeah. You know, before, not that I was acting as your therapist because some people get in the field because it's intriguing. Right. But a real therapist, no, you was a therapist before you even went to school. Exactly. It's a part of your makeup. And you just see you're a helper. Yeah. You love to give to people. So for me, it's like, I'm not giving you my gift. Right. My gift is special. Exactly. Yeah. And people don't understand that. And the people that don't understand that, I feel like, are the people that don't know the treasure of I feel like people that don't value themselves yes. do not know how to value other people. And that's all that that taught me is because you don't value you. Mm -hmm. You don't value the gifting in other people. Mm -hmm. When I see gifts in other people, I'm like, mm -hmm. yes, tap in. Yes. yes. And that's what I'm saying. When I get inspired by yes. that, yes. because I know because of your gift, there's something that you could deposit in me. Mm -hmm. I'm like a sponge. So you know what that is? That's a growth mindset. Is that what that is? As if what that is. I'm grown. You see an opportunity to learn and to grow. You know what I'm saying? As opposed to like, oh, no, nah, they ain't got, you know, that's their gift. I'm going to leave that over there. It's like, no, you're looking at an opportunity. What can I glean from this person? How can I be inspired and motivated? And that's that's what that is. That's a growth mindset. I think you can be motivated by anybody. I say this all the time. I'm a two-year-old. Sure. If you watch somebody long enough, you're going to learn something. Mm -hmm. And Whether that's positive and negative. 
right? I'm, you, you took it right out of my mouth. Yes. You're either going to teach me what not to do. Mm -hmm. For example, you may teach me everything not to do in a marriage. Yes. And somebody may, that same person may teach me, I need to do this in my marriage. Yeah. But you can learn from anyone. And I would never be arrogant enough to think someone is beneath me, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. But I'm not beneath you either. We're on the same playing field. I see everybody as an equal. There, It's levels. No, you're just the person to me. Mm -hmm. There is no levels. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's so true. That's so true. That's so true. So I'm excited. There's so much I want to tap into. I want to tap into, you know, you being a CEO, you know, how is it navigating business? A whole nother, that's a whole other beast right there. <laughs> people think it's easy. They see you because I think people see me and they're like, if she did it, I can, you can do whatever you want to do. But I don't think people see the behind the scenes, the grit, the grind, everything is put into really running a successful functioning business. Right. When you say you can do everything you want to do, what do you mean? Because when I say that, I don't want somebody, because people look at you and be like, oh, Shamel, Shamel did that, so that must be easy. Oh, okay. You know, okay. I'm saying I don't want to deter, detour anyone from saying, like, oh, she's saying we can't do that because that's not what I'm saying. You right. can do whatever you put your mind Got to. Okay. Got but it. don't just look at somebody where they were here right here and just think it's easy. Yes. They're, they got a podcast. I could do that too. Yes, you can. But are you understanding the work ethic that goes behind and building? The I'm glad you said that because that's where I was going. When you said you can do whatever you want. I'm like, no, to be a CEO, you really got to have self-discipline, right? You can't just, you know, you got to. You, that's you got to have self discipline because you're working for yourself. Whereas if you working for somebody else, you depending on this them. time. You yeah. got to clock in, got to clock out. You got to still do the work. Everything, everybody watching. Everything relies on you. You know that's that's your thing. You know, so it's been it's been a challenge, but I mean, I have looked at it from the perspective of it being a journey. I'm trying to approach everything that way. Like not really. I see the destination, but I'm also in really finding the, the the joy, the lessons, the opportunities, you know, and the steps that is has taken me to even get here. It's so much more that that's to come, you know, but um it's it's refreshing for sure. Um there's a lot of perks that come with it, but then there's also a lot of challenges. It is. You know what I'm saying? It is. Um I am and you have this experience, um, but I'm in the I'm in the process of getting ready to, you know, hire staff. And I think about responsibility you know there's it's a whole nother beast in a whole nother world out there when you when it's you versus now you got employees right because now you got a whole bunch of other stuff to deal with. but i'm excited about it and um yeah it's just it's amazing i sometimes i just look at myself and i'll be like girl. you know my my theme song is girl you made it that's that's girl, why I'm you so made it. I was like, oh, I'm not <laughs> Okay. Yes, you know, and I mean, I made it to this point, you know, um, and I'm grateful for that. It's so I much hurt this so girl. Until we did it on the uh, on the, on the yeah, uh, like, 360. Okay, I like uh -huh. this. Yes, that's my that's my theme song. So, and you know, and I think that's important too. Um, just celebrate. You know, I know I've been intentional. That's why I had to do it for your people. Yeah. I had to do it. Celebrating. Thank you too. Thank you. That meant that meant something. I had to be there. I wasn't missing yet. It really did. Um, but yeah, celebrating and even those small moments, you know what I mean? Because sometimes we can get so caught up in just moving, right? And just doing things that we don't take the time to celebrate ourselves and be like to give ourselves a pat on the back and be like, you know what? You know what I've learned is that just the type of personality that we have is that when we meet that benchmark. It's like, but I gotta get to the next one. Yeah. And so it was actually Demetrius, my husband, I was like, You pay for all this stuff and you still focused on getting here and you don't even stop to recognize what happened here. Yeah. And so it made me realize, even with everybody that it's the most people I've ever seen die since twenty twenty than I've ever in my life. My dad was like, People die every day. I was like, No, not like these last two years. And it really made me slow down and reflect on the things and live, take every moment in. And that's why I made it to your 50th because last year, or was it this year? It was this year. Mm -hmm. This year, you know, my cousin had, she turned 30. Mm -hmm. 
And I didn't make it. And I said, everybody that I value and I love has made it there. That day, I went to my niece's third birthday. From there, I went to your party. From there, I went to go see my childhood friend that was visiting around here from Texas. Because I'm like, I have to basically show everyone that I love and show up for them no matter what. Because I think you can go until next time. But y'all know until next time. Yeah. Yeah. So you, you value that. And it's unfortunate that those deaths had to kind of, or maybe maybe it wasn't just the death, but whatever has happened has really got you to that place. Um, but sometimes that's why we value people. Yeah, I used to shoot sure. at, like, sure. do three events in a day. But what happened was I got tainted yeah. because I said, I'm running all over the world, showing up for everybody. I have a book signing, two family members there, mm-hmm. have a seminar, a few families there, write a book. A few member family members buy the book. So then I said, nah, I'm only showing up for those that value and love me. Yeah. So it changed my perspective of who I show up for. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And I think that we should do that. I think we should do that. That's having healthy to be this way. Oh, okay. Having healthy boundaries. You know what I'm saying? Self preservation. Self preservation. Yeah, I'm big on that. Self preservation. Like that's that's my thing. Like and people think that it's being selfish. No. no. But I we use words like even confronting a client in therapy. You no, know, you should confront your client sometimes. Yes. You should be There's selfish sometimes. Confrontation. Yes. 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 Confrontation yes. is not a negative word. Mm-hmm. Conflict is not a negative word mm-hmm. unless you're being aggressive. Because exactly. conflict comes and you have to address conflict. You have to be selfish sometimes. And I think we use words and like, no, it depends on the context of how you're using the word. I absolutely be selfish sometimes. I remember every time my phone rang, I would pick it up. And I'll start watching my husband. He just let it ring. And I'm like, oh, I don't have to pick up my phone when somebody calls. It's my time. And I just may not feel like talking today. And I don't have to. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think. Um, I think everybody should kind of practice. You know what I'm saying? Get to know like what their their threshold is, what their value is, what their self value and self worth. You know what I mean? And I just think the world would be so much better if everybody could operate like that. Because wouldn't that be a perfect world? <laughs> yeah, that it, it was. So you know, yeah, I feel like you come across very few people like that. However, I want to go back to the employee employer thing. Mm-hmm. Because before being an employer, before being a CEO, I used to be like, these employers, they don't pay nothing. And some of them don't, they pay mm-hmm. attention and all this stuff. But then when I became an employer, I was kind of just talking, because I'm like, you know, I want to do all this stuff. And I, so I'm an employer that don't just pour in professionally, I do it personally. Yeah. You come and tell me there's something going on because I have a heart for people. And I try to give. We have mental health day. There's so many things I try to tap into their gift. And okay, you're a therapist, but you just have to be a therapist. You can have your own podcast. You can write your own book. You can do what do you want to do? Let's cultivate that gift. Bring it here and you can take it out to the world. I, you don't even have to stay here because I want to pour into you because real leaders build other leaders. And that's my philosophy. But I found it disheartening as an employer. Because I have the mindset that I have wanting to build and help and mold and grow and push and go out there and do their thing. And then realizing everybody don't want to pour back into the company. Right. So you're doing all this stuff. And then it dawns on me why some employers just see employees as a number. Mm-hmm. Because employees is only seeing you as a paycheck. Right. Like, for example, I'm realizing I, my husband, he was like, you're always going to be on an island by yourself. Because then I had to think, I'm like, dang, I'm doing this. And then behind my back, they're not doing their work and they, you know, playing around and still in time off, you know, off the clock and doing, you know, doing all this stuff. And he says, Samir, you're always going to be the odd man out. He said, think about when you was at a job and the supervisor wasn't around and how they didn't like the suit and all the stuff they had to say. And I was like, but I was the person, I would go tell the supervisor exactly how I felt. Mm-hmm. Well, any place I've ever worked at, I still talk to my super to this day mm-hmm. because I've always been the type where they talking about, I'm going to tell you what I don't like. We're going to address this situation, right? right? right. But it's kind of disheartening that you see people always say they just look at you like a number. 
But if you're the type of employee or the person that just looks at the employee, I'm a person. Right. I'm a person at the end of the day. Right? Mm -hmm. With feelings. Mm -hmm. with You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I'm a person just like you. So if you're looking at me, oh, that's just my paycheck. Mm -hmm. Why do people then get mad when employers just like, oh, that's just a number? Yeah, I don't, I don't even know. But I did want to ask you a question. Oh, you okay. just deviated. <laughs> <laughs> right? I want, because, you know, my mind, it'd be all over okay. the place. So you talked about you being an employee and an employer. Okay. What's that transition like for you? Are, are you in it still? Or how has that been? Never, you know what's so funny? I've never had an employee. Okay. Employee, employers, you need them both. Mm -hmm. You need them both. You got to know what your lane is. It's like, oh, she's saying she never had an employee mind. That's for me. Right. Right. Yeah. Some people have to talk to my husband because he was cool with a nine to five, but he, because he, he's always been a provider since he was 16. So he likes consistency. Okay. But my personality, I never want, like, the way my mind operates, mm -hmm. an employee, I would always be done before the time of my work. Always just sitting here writing my books on clock time mm -hmm. because y'all don't have anything for me to do. You get what I'm saying? So for me, it wasn't a big transition. They call me bossy anyways. I've always been a natural leader. I've never had the mindset that I've ever wanted to work with someone. And this is the thing. And people think I'm crazy. Richard used to always be like, oh, you always see the end because I have to see the end to start. That's just me. I have to see where this is going. So I see the full picture. And I remember when I was like a little girl, I would walk around in Kmart and I would be envisioning myself buying stuff for my house. And everybody would be like, why you want this big house? Well, because I always told them I was going to have a chef. I always told them I was going to have a housekeeper, have a housekeeper, ain't accomplished the chef part yet. But I've always told them these things because this is what I've always seen myself doing. So to be an employer, I've always seen myself doing that. The problem was, I have a problem with relinquishing control okay. because when I do stuff, yeah. it's going to get done. Yes. The <laughs> issue I have with people is giving you a task and you don't complete the task. Yeah. So I had to learn. That was the hardest thing for me to do. I would do 10 different things at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm working on a book right now. Okay, I got my mental health business, working on a hair care line doing the podcast, working on a series to promote to different, you know, sh TV shows or Netflix, right? Mm -hmm. But when I give you something and it comes back to me and you keep asking me questions and it, I might as well do it myself. Yeah. So I had to pray and say, God, you got to send people to me that are going to be, because if you give me something, I've yeah. always been a type of employee. Tell me what to do and leave me alone. Yes. It's going to get done. Mm -hmm. You don't have to check on me. Mm -hmm. You don't have to micromanage me. I'm going to be done before the deadline. So for me, that was the hardest transition is basically giving certain tap. Now I have a squad. I give it to them. It's done and it's lovely. That's why I could be here working on my podcast. Right. Why they there. You right. understand what I'm so saying? You, but you had to build that. I had to build that team. And that was frustrating because you're going through a lot of different people. But I've learned to decipher people straight off the bat and get them out. You don't even hire them, right? Yeah. People say a whole lot in the interview. Then you yeah. put them in. It's like, I don't like to where I have to. I don't want to micromanage you. Right. I just want, you know what you might supposed as well to do. do it yourself. I might as well do it myself. Right. But that was the hardest transition in business is basically relinquishing control and knowing that it would be done to my capability. That's cool. Yeah. I foresee that for myself too. Because you know that was hard. Yeah. I foresee that. But you know, I'm working through it. You know, you can kinda, you know, that's why I look, it's good to have friends, you know, doing things. Right. You know, I can always reach back and you know. But this is the beauty of this. Yeah. This is the beauty of this. You're wrapping this up. But this is the beauty of this is and this is why I'm not intimidated by other women. Because the beauty of this is you could take from that woman and learn something to apply it to your life, to apply it to your parenting skills, relationship skills, marital skills, business skills. And you have those people around you that are willing to share. Because even credentialing, yeah. you gave me the applications. I said, this is how you credential right. on insurance panels. Da, 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 da. Mm -hmm. Other people want to tell you. Yeah. And you come to me 
this is how you do this, 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 Kaiser, boom, 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 right? Yeah. And so the beauty of having these type of connections is that we're building together. Yeah. I see you winning, you happy? Yeah. I'm happy. Yeah. You see me winning, vice versa. Yeah. And this is what it's all about. But just wrapping us up, I got one thing to say. Go ahead. Because we're in the same lane, too. Yeah. In the of same course. Field. You got a lane. It's enough seats at the table. It's enough money to be made. It's enough growth to have, right? And I'm glad you said that. And I've always said this. We're both speakers. We do not speak the same. We may not reach the same people. We're both therapists. Our therapy styles is not the same. We're going to reach different people. We're both authors. Our writing styles are not the same. And this is where people get it confused. I'm not in competition with you. I want to help you. Exactly. Because when you win, I win. <laughs> I say the dopest thing to me ever. The dopest thing to me ever is when you have a squad full of friends and everybody on their boss stuff. What? Yeah, what? You know what I mean? No big eyes and little U's. We all Oprah's in this group. Exactly. Don't get it twisted. Exactly. So with that being said, friend. <laughs> and yes, you call me friend. Because <laughs> everybody ain't my friend. That sis stuff drove me crazy when it first came out. Right. Sis, for everybody's not my friend. And people get offended by that. Mm-hmm. Just because I know you and I've done business with you and we network, you're not my my friends. If you ain't never been to my house, you ain't never been in one of my inner circles, you, I ain't never been to your house. You're not my friend. You're not my friend. Because I'm not coming to your house. You, you're, not my, right. you're not my friend. We're associates. Right. However, with that being said, Tell us where they can find you. Tell us where they can go get some services at your, you know, your mental health, your your, your company. Yeah. Close us out with you. It's all about you. This is your moment to shine where they can find you and what you got going on. Yeah. So, um, again, my name is Shermel Williams. I am a licensed marriage and family therapist. I'm a CEO. I'm CEO of Better Sleep Encounters, which is a group type of therapy practice. There's no subject of among us. We are not Ooh. accepting any clients at this time. <laughs> But check Book us to out. Capacity. Yeah, but check us out. We can be fine on all platforms: Google, uh, Instagram, Facebook. I'm not in, and on TikTok. Yes, I'm not on YouTube or anything like that yet. I'm also a speaker and an author. So also you hire can, her. Yes, you can find me at Shamel Williams on all platforms as well. Uh, Spell your name: C H E R M E L Williams. Williams. Yes. And so, yeah, connect, connect, connect. Um, I love to, you know, if you have any type of events going on and you need a little bit of inspiration, motivation, encouragement, hit me up. Um, I love, I, that's what I do. That's what I love to do. And so, yeah, thank you for having me, friend. This friend. was good. And this is me jumping back in the waters after being out of the waters for so long. Yeah. But we back. She going to have her podcast soon. Can't wait to be a guest on her show. Because this is how me and my friends do it. We do it big and we support each other. Until next time, as we always say, continue to break cycles. We out. Peace. Grind face.